Hello there, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com. It's a free website for all things Photoshop, Lightroom, and anything else we find interesting. In this video, I'll be continuing my exploration of 3D text. And now that I've put it on the ground plane, and I've made it nice and shiny, all of which you can see in previous movies, what I want to do is separate the text and rotate them individually by letter. I even want to lay a letter down, a bit like this. All right, let's jump into Photoshop and see what's what. So I've got two layers, background and a fall, and the fall is the one that is my 3D layer. If I go into 3D, you can see that I've got my fall there, and I've done a little bit of extrusion, and you can also see that I've got a little bit of inflation, and I've used the wooden pattern for the front there as well. There we go, a little bit of bevel. Now, if you've watched the previous two movies, all this will be making sense to you. I've got two infinite lights, one at the front and one at the back. Now then, what I have done this time is this front light, I have given a little bit of shadow because I'm guessing there's another light source here. So I wanted two shadows. Again, the extrusion is nice and shiny. So let's go and have a look at that. Whoops, let's go and have a look at the extrusion. There we go, nice and shiny and very reflective as we have done before. And what I'm hoping to do is to get a little bit of a reflection of each of the letters on themselves and also a reflection of the uh, floor as well. All right, let's work through this now. I'm gonna go to floor. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into environment. And here in environment, you can see that I've got a section here for the ground plane. And this is where I can make the ground plane reflective. So down here, I've got the reflection, the color of the reflection and the opacity. I can bring that right up, should I wish. And you can see it soon becomes quite reflective. I'm actually going to take that down to maybe 15%. So I'll just click in there and type in 15. There we go. Maybe even, let's go 20. That's nice. Okay. Now above that, we've got here IBL, image-based lighting. Now what we can do here is we can put in an image that will then be reflected onto the 3D text. That sounds great. So let's click on the folder there. And then from the folder, I can come and open a new texture. I happen to know where my new texture is. Well, let's load the texture. And it's this one right here. It's the Adobe stock image that is my background. Now, when it comes back, what I end up is this sphere. And this is almost as if we wrapped the whole image around this sphere. And then I can move it around as if I'm inside it and looking out. There we go. All right, so I want to sort of match it up reasonably well. There we go. I want to see a bit of the floor being reflected in my letters. Okay, that'll do there. Let's go back to fall. Now I want to start making these individual letters. But now looking back at that, I'm just gonna go back to the environment and maybe bring down the intensity of that IBL there. That's better. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to fall. That looks much better. Okay, to separate the letters, let's go to 3D and then down to split extrusion. And when I do that, a little pop-up, something that I've never read, couldn't tell you what it says. Uh, I'm just gonna click OK and we're done. Now what we end up with is the four letters individually. Now in my case, I've got full, full two, three, and four. But when you try this, you may have these labeled as F, A, L, and L. I've got the F, I've got the A, I've got the L, and I've got the L. So they're all individual. All right, I'm gonna actually click on the F here and I can rotate that around. And you'll notice the reflection, of course, goes with it. Now I'm gonna rely heavily on this panel up in the top left-hand corner and this is giving me a top-down view of my letters. If you haven't got that, then just go to View and then Show and you need 3D Secondary View. There we go, I've just turned it off, so let's turn it back on again. There we go. Also, what you need to do is click on this and say top. And what that will do is it will make sure that it's right in the middle. Okay, let's go to the L this time and let's rotate that a bit. Let's go that way, that's looking good. And you can see some of the reflection of the IBL already in there. And then I'm gonna turn this one the different way. 
Okay, let's tuck that a little bit behind. There we go, and maybe bring it a little bit forward. And I'm looking at the top there in this secondary window just to make sure that they're not going one on top of the other. Good. All right, now this A, what I want to do is turn that a little bit. And now I want to lay it down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get hold of this blue curve and then click and drag it round. Now I'm going to miss 90 degrees, I can almost guarantee that. So I'm gonna get it close, 88.1, come over to my coordinates, and there's the 88.1, and I'm going to change that to 90 degrees. There we go. And then I'm gonna tab, just to make sure it's selected, and then choose move to ground. Now here it's gone a little bit too far back and I want to move it forward, but getting hold of the green arrow is difficult. I can actually go ahead and grab that from here and rotate it there. There we go. And then move that into place. There we go. And maybe bring that one over just a little bit. There we go. And you can see it's catching a little bit of the shadow from the F there. Okay, let's rotate this a little bit again. I don't really want it that far around. Rotate it, there we go. And maybe move those L's into place as well. Okay. Now to look down more properly on the A, it needs to be a little bit closer really, but I'm gonna bring all the letters closer and I can do that by just clicking on the new group and then I can manipulate them as a full group entirely like that. There we go, that's better. I'm gonna to click top just to centralize everything again. And there we go. Let's give it a quick render and see how it's looking. So just like before, the blue square goes across the screen and then takes its time when it gets to our letters just to render them out a little bit. And I'm looking to see what I get from that. You can see one of the lights is being reflected in the uh, L there. Not sure I want that. That means that uh, the lights are a little bit too low down to reflect on there. It's not realistic. But I'm getting a bit of the floor in the bottom of the A there, which is kind of nice. Okay, that's not bad. I'll press escape. And I'm just gonna move this A a little bit. Just move that back a little bit and then into the gap. That's good. And then I'm gonna go back to the IBL because, well, why not? I can. There we go, just click on it. And then I can rotate that around just to make sure I get it right. Okay, that looks a bit better. Let's come back to my full. And give that a quick render. Let's see how that looks now. Again, the blue square goes across and that's looking a bit better. It's not quite so confusing. Good. All right. Yep, that looks good. I think I might leave that one and leave it to render fully. So there we go. I'm Eric Reno. Don't forget to come over to tipsquirrel.com and see more tutorials from a whole host of different writers and video recorders. And I'll see you again next time. Bye bye for now.